it's one of those things where as you when you own a tower you start to learn about all these things as you become a tower owner and it really is challenging in some points and i'm glad i have it and i enjoy using it but in the same respect if i was doing it again i would probably this is Hey everybody, it's Professor Jim. I am here in my backyard. That's my tower. And I'm talking about a story today about how I discovered that I had some issues with an antenna on my tower. At the top of this 35 foot tower is a step IR urban beam and I've had it for a few years. I noticed recently, a couple of months ago, that my SWR was really high on that antenna. In fact, it was not usable for my radio. So I started to do some troubleshooting and first thing I did was check the coax, make sure it's all connected up, make sure it's connected from the radio to the tower here, make sure it's connected up the tower. All that was good, ran SWR checks on it, it all checked out at 50 ohms, one to one, we we're in good shape which really meant there was only one place the problem could be, at the top of the tower with the coax that went between the lightning arrestor and the antenna itself. So my buddy James N0WRL came over and here's what happened. All right, All so right. what do you got you me doing, Jim? All right, we are replacing the coax that goes between the lightning arrestor and the top of the step IR antenna. So because that antenna spins around from time to time, the coax is a weak point and it's cracked Just wears somewhere on the way. Does that actually start getting moisture inside? Uh, that is definitely a possibility if you don't seal it up well, but my, I think my assumption is that just part of the coax is split and so there's no longer electrical connectivity in part of it. Now, how tall is this tower? Um, it's 30 foot from the base. So there's one, two, three sections uh, to take you up to 30 foot and then the uh, mast is another five feet or so. So the antenna is 35 feet above average terrain. All right, well, wish me luck. All right, you got this, man. <laughs> It's this way. I always use the three point rule. So I always like to have three points of contact. Make sure I got my legs in the spot before I move an arm, et cetera, et cetera. Three point rule is, so you always wanna have three things touching? Three things touching at the same time. Two feet and a hand, two hands and a foot. And what I did was I prepared this bag for you so it's got cables and cutters and tape and those kind of things. So we can hoist it up and you don't have to carry it up, but you have all the tools you're gonna to wanna to have at the top. So this egg beater is basically just for satellites, right? Um, satellites and I do use it for the local repeaters. Oh. Uh, I had previously used this and then something happened to it. So now I am using both. Now in order to get like to Stone Mountain, which is this way, you can see there's a lot of stuff in between. I got to put my radio on 65 watts to make it, but I make it. Try not to bump anything while I'm doing this. Okay. Mess anything else Yeah, up. you're in the tricky spot right there. Now, the good thing is I've got my harness. So as I get up, once I actually get to the spot where I'm going to be working, I can lock myself in. All right. So here's our light. What do you call it? Lightning arrestor? Yeah, lightning yep. protector. Yep, so that, yeah, so the way I have it set up is uh, all the stuff at the top goes into a lightning arrestor, and then there's a different set of coax that comes down. There's more lightning arrestors at the bottom to try and protect as best as, as best as possible. Gotcha. And here's the bag coming up. Okay. So which, let me see, the one that goes up is here. So I'll go ahead and disconnect this. Yeah. It's kind of broken. Yeah, I had that off when I did testing. So I was trying to figure out where the problem was and I could go up and put a meter on it there and test the coax coming down with a, a dummy load. And that allowed me to uh, see that the problem was not in the feed line part of the cable. It was in the top, uh, top, the top part section, the, yeah. yeah, top section. So another thing for safety reasons, all the power is off to stuff on the tower. The radios are all off. Uh, so there's no way for you to get accidentally electrocuted. That's a really good point. I didn't even think about that, but I'm glad you uh, 
I'm glad you thought about that. <laughs> It's one of those things where as you, when you own a tower, you start to learn about all these things as you become a tower owner. And it really is challenging in some points. And I'm glad I have it and I enjoy using it. But in the same respect, if I was doing it again, I would probably do a tilt down tower. This way I could- Just bring it down to the lower roof. Lower it and work on it and bring it back up instead of having to climb. And some of that is due to my age and some of that is just due to, it makes a lot of sense and it's, not really cost prohibitive to do that. Yeah, I mean, if it makes it easier, yep. why not? You know, it's not yep. like it's not like you have anything to prove by climbing towers all the time. Unless you're, shout out to Ray W2RE who's climbing towers and posting it on Facebook all the time. How am I doing, Ray? <laughs> you're doing great. Yeah, I've never been up really beyond where you are. Uh, whenever I've had work done higher than that, I have had somebody come and do it. I think the last time when I had that, I built that antenna on the ground and had it put up. And I think he charged me, oh, about 500 bucks. Not a bad business climbing tower. No, no, <laughs> he was good. And that was 300 sure bucks an hour, which included driving from wherever he was to here. Yeah, it's probably kind of a hard thing to find because it's like so special, like, you know. Yes. Yeah, it was definitely difficult to find but I can see where you've gotten it disconnected down here and you're disconnecting it as you go up. I really like this step IR antenna. Uh, it's it's nice cool to, to get to see it up close. Yeah, it's nice to have uh, Yagi performance from two meters to six meters and then be able to spin around the dipole in whatever direction I want on uh, 30 and 40. Um, and oh. I've had no trouble with the control cables for this. That's always worked like a champ, but this will be my third uh, coax cable going to this antenna. One of the nice things that I did learn though is that my, my long wire, so it's an NFED half wave, 80 to 10, it works pretty well. I used it in the Georgia QSO party contest on 40 and 20, and I made about 75 contacts over the last weekend. Nice. So while I missed this because being able to turn and do directional and okay, I'm going to go northeast now or towards more towards the west, it gives me more options. That certainly gave me a lot of performance for what it is. We've almost got it. We're close. That's it, James. Perfect. First tower climb in the books. It was awesome. We got a successful connection. Don't tell Professor Jim this, but I'm, I get to drink out of the uh, Professor Cup today. You are. <laughs> this, is, this is part of my reward for working on the tower today. Here's the old coax. Yeah, you can see how corroded the one that we just replaced is. So Jim, you did know the problem. <laughs> Well, eventually, but I did a lot of troubleshooting leading up to it where I tested the cable between the shack and my lightning arrestor point on the ground, and I tested the cable that went up the tower before I did the hard part. So, or you did the hard part, I should say. <laughs> Testing the coax from the top of the tower previously. So we'll take that off, we'll connect up this cool little antenna analyzer. But I'll go ahead and flip this on, and it's gonna look, yeah, it's 1.2 at 5.6. So I can control that downstairs at the controller of the antenna and it tell it to adjust the lengths of the, of the so elements. We can't, we can't call it a success yet. Oh, it's absolutely a success. Okay. It's absolutely a Let's success. Let's do it. This, I love it. I, was I love not, it. I was not getting any, anywhere near one point anything SWR anywhere on the band. Oh, so nice. That okay. Fixed, that okay. fixed the problem. Now the only thing we need to do <laughs> is tune the antenna just like you'd tune any other antenna. I love it. Oh. This is November Zero Whiskey Radio Lima QSL. Yeah, November Zero Whiskey Radio Lima. Yeah, thank you. I'm Ed and I'm in Ohio just checking something out here. We've helped over 60,000 students get their US FCC amateur radio license, and we can help you too, no matter your age or educational background. Go to www.hamradioprep.com and try a free lesson today.